Oh my god, this gum tastes so good. Mm. I'm surprised they let me have any. I'm just glad they let me talk this last time to finally get my side of the story out. I can't believe it's been this long and like nobody's listening to me, but at least I have this one opportunity to set the record straight. So I don't have much time, but they gave me this thing. Is this, is this on? Hello? Okay. All right. Well, mm, they gave me this gum. So delicious. You know, it's times like this that you really appreciate the little things in life. And this is like watermelon extra gum. And it was my favorite. It was my all time favorite. So anyway, at least I got to chew it one last time. So my name is Diamond. <laughs> you know, like the gem, the jewel, Diamond. Yeah, that's me. Um, all right. Well, all the sugar's gone out of this anyway. So I'm going to take it out so you can understand me because I'd hate to have to do this. And, and then you can't understand what I'm saying. So Pay attention, because I don't know when they're coming, so you have to kind of listen up. This is all about me and Cedric. I mean, Cedric, I, I don't understand really why I'm here, but uh, he was the, my lover. He was the love of my life, and I worshipped the ground that this guy walked on. I mean, he was gorgeous, and, you know, he had that curly hair and the big, full, sensuous lips, and like all the girls liked him. I knew that. I knew that. I, I I knew that. Okay. But I liked him too. That's why I liked him. You know, I'm a girl. I liked him. He was cute. And, um, I was just so amazed. Like one day, you know, he came in the coffee shop when I was in there and he sat down next to me and struck up a conversation. And I was just so excited that, you know, he would pick me, me out of all the girls to talk to. So, um, Oh, did I tell you he was gorgeous? <laughs> yeah, he's like really good looking. He's got this um, this body. Like when I first saw him, I thought he was an Adonis. I mean, ooh, just like big broad shoulders. And mm, just thinking about him again, just, oh, he's just so gorgeous. Uh, uh, just an Adonis. He could have done anything in modeling or, you know, television, film, something. But no, he just, you know, he was a local guy and... He sat down next to me in that coffee shop that day and just like my whole world changed, you know. He asked me for my number and I I thought, wow, out of all the girls in this town, in this neighborhood, on this block, you know, he picked me. So I was really, really excited. And, and you know, I gave him my number, but I didn't really expect him to call. I mean, like I said, he was an Adonis. He could have any woman he wanted. And, you know, why would he pick me? I mean, I'm okay. Don't get me wrong. I mean... I have turned a couple of heads, you know, <laughs> you know, guys kind of like me, but you know, it's not anybody on, on Cedric's level, man, God, he's just gorgeous. Okay. So anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah. So that day in the coffee shop, he asked me for my number. I gave it to him. I didn't really expect him to call. I, I went back to the office and, you know, got through the day and then had to go to the grocery store and, I got home and I uh, was just putting the food up and getting ready to feed the cat. And, uh, you know, my cell phone rang and I, I, I looked at it. I didn't really recognize the number. And uh, I, I, I said, hello. And it was Cedric. I was like, wow, you really called. And he said, yeah, I did. I liked you. He said, you, you're very pretty and, you know, you've got a great conversation. And, you know, I'd like to get to know you better. And I said, really? So that's how it started, you know, and he would pick me up and we'd go out and, you know, things got like really excited and, you know, he we'd go to the movies and he'd take me to dinner and, you know, I, we were just like after a month already, you know, things were getting really, really serious to the point of where I thought he was going to ask me to move in or, or have me move in with him. And, you know, all I could think about was, you know, just how wonderful things were and I mean every time I saw him just my heart skipped a beat and my stomach flipped and oh god did I mention how good in bed he is oh, 
let me tell you something. He touched spots without using his hands, okay, <laughs> that I didn't even know I had, okay. He knew I had those spots, apparently, because he sure was working them. But, I mean, he took me to heights and levels that I had only read about in those, you know, real nasty erotic books. Yeah, okay, well, and let me tell you something. Cedric was a bit of a freak. I mean, he was a real big guy. So, you know, he could, like, twist me and turn me and contort me. I mean, one minute I was looking at my toes, and the next minute I was looking up at the ceiling. And, my God, ugh. And then he would just lay there next to me when we were done and just talk about the future and what he wanted to do and you know it was just wonderful so we had like the beginnings of something really real I mean he you know was open with me the sex was great there was great communication and I just thought okay after all these years and after all the bullshit I have finally found my prince charming so one day, um, I decided to leave work early and uh, I picked up some flowers and picked up a couple of steaks and some potatoes and mushrooms and onions. You know, I was just going to cook up a really nice dinner for him and surprise him. Uh, so I went over to his place and, um, you know, I knocked on the door and um, this bitch answered the door. OK, she uh, was dressed in his T-shirt. And uh, I was like, who the fuck are you? And she was like, uh, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and um, I was getting ready to throat punch that bitch. And Cedric showed up. He just he just popped up and he's like, what are you doing here? And I said, well, you know, I, I came over to fix you dinner. And he acted like he had no idea who I was. I know he was putting on the show for this girl. And I said, Cedric, what are you doing? Who is she? Why is she in your shirt? And why am I standing out here on this side of the door? And she's in there with you. I, 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 what's going on? And do you know, he looked at me and said something that really kind of startled me. It, it shocked me. He said, if I have to tell you one more time, you psycho fucking bitch to leave me alone, I'm going to call the cops. <laughs> and I stood there and looked at him like, What? I'm, I, what are you talking about? I came over here to fix you dinner. You know, we've been going on and on in this relationship for like a month now, almost six weeks. So what are you talking about? I know one thing, she better get out of your shirt. And before I could finish my sentence, he slammed the door in my face. And I was like, okay, I get it. So he didn't want to make a scene in front of this girl, you know, he that he would probably like rip that shirt off her body and make her get dressed and send her home. And then he would come out, you know, and talk to me and explain to me exactly what was going on. So I was cool. I was cool. I said, okay, well, I'll just go home and, you know, I'll, I'll make the steaks for myself. I don't really want to eat two steaks, but I will do it anyway, because, you know, I'm giving my man his space to get rid of that bitch. So I go home and, you know, um, <laughs> Well, I didn't really kick the cat. I, I just kind of like when I walked in the door, I accidentally, you know, I st stumbled into her. And um, she, you know, she just kind of went running. I, I didn't see her anymore the rest of the night. But um, I put the steaks on and um, I like my steaks kind of rare. So I didn't really keep it in the pan too long. And, and when I was sitting there eating it and just, you know, the taste of that rare raw steak just kind of. I don't know. I don't, I don't really remember what happened, but um, I, I do remember I went back over there to see if he had finished talking with this woman to see if he had finally gotten her out of his apartment. And um, I just, I had taken like a bag of sugar with me, you know, I, I just in case I needed it. And I, when I saw his Hummer there, I just kind of, I, I just got mad. Um, I, I don't know exactly what happened, but I, I just, I got mad and the next thing I know I was like, you know, I had a paper cup and I was pouring the sugar all in his gas tank and yeah, I don't know. Um, I know that. Okay. I admit that probably wasn't the best thing to do, but I was just a little upset, you know? And so I try, I mean that I had tried to call him like 25 times on my way over to the apartment. And if he had just answered the phone, then maybe I wouldn't have got upset enough to put the fucking sugar in his goddamn gas tank. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah. Then like when the cops knocked on my door and asked me, you know, 
you know, where I was, I told him I was there in my apartment the whole time, you know, that I, I hadn't, hadn't gone anywhere. I'd been there and they asked me, could I prove it? I'm like, no, I can't fucking prove it. I just told you I hadn't left the house. Well, cops don't really like for you to talk to them that way. And they gave me a very stern warning uh, that I need to stay away from Cedric. And I was like, okay, I just kind of went along with the program. But I figured nobody's going to keep me from my man. They're not going to keep me from my man, not at all. I don't know who they think they are. So, yeah, anyway, I, I went to sleep. I do, I, you know, I finally locked it down and I, I went to sleep. I shut it out and I, I just tried to get control of myself. And the next morning, you know, I got up and I went to work. Well, actually, I, I didn't go straight to work. I, 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 I drove by Cedric's house and, um, yeah, his truck was still there. It's probably because he couldn't start it because, you know, the sugar and everything. And so I, I wanted to see if I could maybe take him to work. And so I knocked on his door and he yelled through the door. I, I couldn't really hear everything he said, something like, um, get the fuck away and something. I don't know. And, and just, you know, I, I just I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to see him one more time. And, you know, I, I said, I just I just need to talk to you just one more time. Just 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 one more time. OK, well, I must have gotten through to him because he opened the door. You know, he opened the door and he said, um, I just vaguely remember him saying something like, um, we had met once. I, and I'm like, well, what do you mean? Yeah, we've been dating for a month. And, you know, later, the, 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 I guess they call it the district attorney or the, some lawyer or something said that he and I had never even dated, that I had made all that shit up. I'm like, are you crazy? No, I, are you crazy? That's the question. Are you fucking crazy? This is a man that I have given myself to unconditionally, all right? I have done everything for him. I have cooked for him. I have cleaned for him. <laughs> I gave him some of the best sex he probably ever had in his life. And you mean to tell me that you're saying that we didn't have a relationship? Well, I don't know what was going on there. So it's like when he was telling me, like, one time I, I, I got really confused and, and I said, I don't understand what you're saying. You, you know, you, we were on the brink of moving in together. I mean, you told me that you loved me. And, I, and he said, I didn't tell you I loved you. He said, I don't even fucking know you. I, I don't even know if I like your ass or not. And I said, you're kidding, right? Are you kidding me? So I don't really remember. Well, I kind of do. Like when I walked in the kitchen, I, I do remember walking in the kitchen, but I definitely don't remember grabbing the knife. I don't, I, I have no recollection of that. So whatever that lawyer was talking about, I'm not so sure. Okay. Because I don't remember, but you know, they said that I grabbed a knife and they said I stabbed him right through the heart, like not once, but like 17 times. And I don't remember any of that. Cause like when I came, well, Wait a minute. Now, let, let me let me not talk too fast because I do remember being in the shower washing all that blood off. But I don't know where that blood came from. I don't know where the, it could have been like when I killed the cat. Now, I do remember when I killed that bitch, I, that fucking cat. I remember killing the cat. But no, I don't remember killing Cedric. I, I, I just, I, you know, it's a little blurry. But I, I remember being in the shower and that was like right about the time the cops busted through and Oh, man, I was lucky that they let me put some jeans and a T-shirt on. Yeah, good thing I got great boobs because they didn't let me put a bra on. They didn't wait for me to do that. But um, so anyway, here I am. And um, nobody would listen to me. And, 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 and it's really his word against mine. Well, he's dead, but it's really his word against mine as to what really happened. And and I know that things get a little fuzzy and I, and I have these blackouts, but you know, I'm not taking any lawyer's word for it. Are you fucking kidding me? You know about lawyers, right? Oh yeah. I saw the OJ trial. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Oh, I, I think they're coming for me now. Well, it, it, at least, at least I got to tell my side of the story and, for once and for all, and I, I know that you'll believe me. I, I don't really care about anybody else. I just want to make sure that, that you believe me. That's the honest to God's truth. That's all I really care about. Don't forget Diamond. Diamond is forever. Remember that. Don't forget me.